We now come to our second form of inductive inference, namely statistical syllogism. Remember that a syllogism is defined as an argument with three lines, two premises together with a conclusion. Syllogisms can occur anywhere arguments are offered. In a statistical syllogism, a certain feature is ascribed to someone or something because that same feature is found in the class to which the person or thing belongs. Here's an example. Most surgeons carry malpractice insurance. Dr. Williams is a surgeon. Conclusion, so Dr. Williams carries malpractice insurance. As you can see, this is an induction. It is possible for the premises to be true and the conclusion false, so it's non-conclusive. Let's examine the structure of statistical syllogism more carefully. First, we note that the first premise uses the quantifier most so the statement is a non-universal generalization. If it said all surgeons, it would be a universal generalization. The form of the argument is as follows. Premise 1, most A's are B's. Premise 2, W is an A. Conclusion, W is a B. Here's another example, this one taken from naval history. Premise 1, most famous battles involved careful strategy. Premise 2, Trafalgar was a famous battle. Conclusion, so Trafalgar involved careful strategy. This is a syllogism, that is, it is an argument with three lines, two premises together with a conclusion. It uses a non-universal generalization in the premises, a specific statement as the second premise, and another specific statement in the conclusion. It ascribes a certain feature, namely careful strategy, on the basis of Trafalgar's classification as a famous battle. It therefore has a form that is identical to the surgeon example we just looked at. Here's another example of a statistical syllogism. 80% of police officers have anti-terrorism training. Premise 2, Akisha will be a police officer. Conclusion, so Akisha will have anti-terrorism training. Notice that we have merely substituted a percentage, 80%, for the word many, but it's still a non-universal generalization. Let's recall the difference between these two types of generalization. A universal generalization involves all members of a certain class and may be expressed by linguistic devices such as all and no. A non-universal generalization only involves some members of a certain class and it's often expressed by words such as some, most, many, a few, lots of, n percent, etc. We now know that there is a common form for statistical syllogisms. n percent of A's are B's, where the percentage may be substituted for by other quantifiers such as many, some, etc. M is an A, conclusion, so M is a B. It is important to note the scope of the quantifier in non-universal generalizations. The greater the size, the more reliable the argument. You must keep in mind that the generalization can never be universal because then the argument would become a deduction. Any statistical syllogism will always have at least one premise that contains a non-universal generalization. This concludes this segment. Please proceed to the next segment.